Hi guys, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. <laughs> I do it. In the middle of that, I realized my neighbors are probably gonna think something's up. <laughs> probably, so let's not let's not go too hard with the Wolf Dead Podcast intro. Let's scale let's, let's scale back a little bit, you know? All right. Yeah, you know, you don't you don't want to all of a sudden, you know, people jumping in and be like, Oh my god, Bob, are you okay? And, and I don't like, I don't hey, want all of a sudden people calling the police is what I don't want. Yeah. Yeah, because that's that's a problem in this community. Yes. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. Anyway, hi guys, how's it going? It's podcast time. Podcast time. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. There's much to discuss today. Yes. So much news. Has none happened. of it. None of it exciting. <laughs> the biggest news that happened in the past week was the Pokemon Presents, which uh, yes. is of no interest to us. <laughs> Uh, also, it was almost a whole week ago. Yeah. And we covered it extensively on the Nintendo podcast. So go watch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably more interesting than what we would have talked about because we would have just probably yeah. trashed it the whole time. It would have it would have been like, yeah, that sounds cool if you're into Pokemon. And that would have been it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what else do we have to talk about today? We're going to talk about multiverses. Season one is delayed. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's delayed, uh, but it's already like a very popular game, and it's not even actually out yet. That's crazy. I'm shocked yeah. because the game looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think if it, oh, well, we'll get into it when we get into the show proper. Okay. We also need to talk about Splatoon 3. There's a direct coming. Uh, yeah. We also got IDOS wants to be back in. They they, they want to bring back Deus Ex. Uh, yeah. We got a live action Pac-Man movie. <laughs> uh, Netflix games. EA talking about single player games once again. And that's pretty much it. But first, before we do any yeah. of that, I want to rank every single Mario game proper. Yes. The All big, the, the mainline Mario games, not the spinoffs, the mainline stuff. Well, what we probably should have done was pick the tier list first, but instead I had to make my I, I'm sorting through tiermaker.com for a good one. I found one that has the Game Boy games and yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Do we want to include that? We can well, always we can just, just not rank the Luigi's Mansion game. We got it. Uh, let's let's throw the Game Boy games in there too. But yeah, ignore right. Luigi's Mansion. Why does it have Luigi's Mansion? I don't know. It just says create a tier list best Super Mario and Luigi games. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, give me that. Yeah, I, it's in the key. Uh, okay. Boom, boom. Oh, we should also while while we're while we're at it, we should thank Lady Luna for the Prime subscription, Amandowski yeah. for the thirty-one months. Happy thirty-one months. I feel like I am describing a child's age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after twenty-four months, you can stop that and just go right to years. <laughs> uh, how many months old am I? A lot. <laughs> I'm three hundred and eighty-four months. Circa X, thank you for the 11 months. Sometimes I wonder if the Wolf Bros are the Mario Bros of this universe. Who is like Mario and who is Luigi? Will? I am a thousand percent <laughs> Luigi. I accept that. I am okay with that. Uh, that is fine with me because he has the better jumping ability. I was at too many games and I jumped on the stage. You know, like we used to do in uh, stage crew and such. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I did that, and then I realized I am too old for that. (laughs) Mid-jump. I was mid-jump, and my knees did not agree with me. I made it. I I fulfilled the jump, but I'm never doing that again. (laughs) Well, you say that, but if you come to the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo this weekend. Oh, that's right. Long Island, New York, and you see Bob. You could ask him to do it. He'll do it right in front of you. That's not true. But we he will do jump have... on any any vendor's table. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a panel. Yes, this we weekend. Do. Yes. Uh, I Sunday I, at two thirty, I believe. I believe it is at two thirty. I don't know yeah. where the panel is, but if you're on Long Island, uh, tickets are pretty cheap, and it's a great convention. It's a big, basically yeah. retro gaming flea market, just like too many games, but smaller, and it's on Long Island. You don't got to travel for it if you're from Long Island. 
Yeah, uh, it's it's a nice, small, intimate affair. A uh, lot of good people will be there. A uh, lot of fun things to see in general. And Long Island kicks ass. So, uh, yes, come on over and hang out. <laughs> I'll be there uh, in the afternoon on Saturday, and I will be there on Sunday for our panel. Yep, same same as me, and it'll be it'll be a good time. Dark type with 100 bits. Hey, guys. So that Sega Dreamcast trailer was pretty cool, though, huh? What are you talking about? What's the Sega Dreamcast trailer? What <laughs> like the about? original from 1999? Because, yes, it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check this out. I saw, okay. speaking of, you know, like the Columbia Pictures YouTube channel uploaded, like, last week? What? The trailer for the 2002 Spider-Man movie. Oh, weird. And like they they treated it like it was a brand new thing, but it was the <laughs> same exact trailer from 2002. Shitty techno metal music and everything. Oh my god! Okay, that's pretty cool. Fantastic. Uh, homemade apple pie says they're making keyboards, Dreamcast themed keyboards. Did we talk about that on the show? We talked about Sega keyboards last week or two weeks ago with the, the high ground uh, keyboards. Sonic. Yeah, the Sonic one that nobody's going to get because you can't actually use it. <laughs> um, I want the Dreamcast one really bad. Uh, and High Ground emailed me, and I I don't know what happened. I tried to <laughs> I tried to like do, get it, but I don't I don't know. Uh, anyway, though, uh, let's 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 do a Mario tier list. Here it is. This is Mario all games. All right, every there game. you go. Yeah, and Luigi's Mansion for some reason, which we're not going to throw on the list. Yeah. This seems like not enough games. No, this is every game. This but, looks this looks like every game. Yeah, I mean, uh, is Yoshi's Island on there? Yoshi's Island. It is, is not. Wow, trash Ooh. tier list. Um, l- let's well, we'll have to put an asterisk for that one. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we could just use Luigi's Mansion for one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's start with in chronological order. So the first one would be Mario Bros. Yes. Okay. Mario Bros. is D tier. <laughs> <laughs> not a very good, not a very good Mario game. Mario Bros. is fun for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it is a good... 10 minutes and once you hit 11 minutes stops being fun <laughs> yeah i mean i get I'm, i'd imagine for the time it's a decent video game that time is not now we have so many other better mario games mario was not it didn't find its footing yet so it's it it's the, not the best version of mario bros is as a mini game in super mario brothers 3 true because by 1985, this game is best used as a mini game, like a bonus level, not as like a whole game. Yeah, not as a whole game for sure. The next one is the original Super Mario Brothers. I'm inclined to put this very high on the list, Will. This is my favorite video game of all time, period. Uh, I mean, there is no denying that it is an S tier game, like flat out. Okay. Sh- that, that should not um, be up down. to the debate. The debate ends there. Uh, where this remains in S tier, that's gonna change, right? As this list goes on, so 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 a lot of people who didn't grow up with something like this uh, would argue that it's like a little floaty, like uh, uh, Mario's a little slippery in it, yeah, uh, which is kind of true. Mario physics have changed a lot over the years. Basically, every Mario game has different physics until you get to the new Super Mario Brothers games, and then they kind of all have like very similar physics. Um, yeah. And the original Super Mario Brothers has some weird physics. Uh, I guess I'm very used to it. Uh, but after even after playing Mario Maker a lot, going back to the original Super Mario Brothers, things are a little wonky and weird. But for me, it's easy to get used to. I do yeah. think that the original Super Mario Brothers has almost a perfect formula for teaching the player how to play the game and having so much depth in it that there's a lot to discover and figure out and a lot of fun to be had because the gameplay loop is very good and there's a lot to to, to discover and do with that gameplay loop. And it's a fucking NES game. <laughs> yeah, there, there's almost like a genius in its simplicity yeah. and like how 
they give you so much with so little. And a lot of games, even today, that like try to do something like this, just, you know, overthink it, overcomplicate it, and just weigh it down with a lot of crap that you don't necessarily need. Yeah, uh, I, I think the very first frames of the game are like the perfect blueprint of teaching somebody basic controls without giving them a tutorial. Um, mm -hmm. the, the only other game that uh, I can think of that does a similar job is uh, Mega Man X. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is almost a perfect game to, to, to me. Definitely the best NES game. Well, actually, never mind. Uh, we yeah, well, we might get into that debate. We might like get two. into that. <laughs> yeah. So the next game that came out was the Lost Level Super Mario Bros. Two. Yeah. Have you played this? Yes. It's not very uh, good. <laughs> I don't like it very much. No. <laughs> um, it it is the uh, same basic blueprint as the original Super Mario Brothers. Something yes. went wrong though. It's it's the same. It's like on the surface, it's the same game, but they start to throw little things at you that you don't realize at first, but they start to throw little things at you that you make you soon realize that this game hates you. Yeah, it hates your family and it doesn't want anything nice for you ever. It wants you to suffer. This game is very hard, uh, depressingly so. And, the, you know, the urban legend is they didn't bring it to America because it was too hard for Americans. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's also uh, a little unfair. Like, like, like yeah. it, it feels like a sick joke. There's like weird stuff like all of a sudden the mushroom can kill you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also like some jumps in it that like uh, seem impossible. And are and are just hard to figure out. There's one yeah. in particular that I think of that I always get stuck on. You have to like make sure that the screen isn't scrolled too far to the right, or else you can't make the jump at all. It's oh, and, and there's the warp pipes that you can just get stuck in and yes. that warp you backwards. Like there's yeah. a lot of shit in the game that you don't see in any other Mario game after this because they realize we might have made we might have made this a little fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and like I want a hard Mario game. I like that stuff. But this isn't the type of difficulty that works. There, so, there are limits to that. You know, th this isn't yeah. challenging. It, it's cruel, honestly. It's a cruel game. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think? B? I would even say, like, I mean, if you want to put it in B, we can put it in B, but it would definitely be the bottom of B. Yeah, I'm going to put it in B. It might move. Yeah. I'm going to put it in B. The next one is the American Super Mario Bros. 2, right? Yes, uh, of course, originally known as Doki Doki Panic. It got a palette swap when it came over to America, and it became Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, it did get re-released in Japan as Super Mario Brothers USA towards the end right. of the Famicom cycle. Um, your your, your like uh, mic volume got lower again. Uh, how about now? Now you're... All right, the perfect. thing comes out of the thing too easily. I got to fix that. I do. That anyway. to be all the time. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 2. I like this game. I think this is a fun game. Um, I understand people who don't think it's a Mario game. <laughs> yeah, so I trash this, on this game... game a lot because it's not a Mario game, but I did have a lot of fun with it. I this think this game, you know, go ahead, go ahead. even though it's not a Mario game, it added a lot to Mario canon. Because like characters like Shy Guy and Birdo debuted in this game, the look of the distinctive look of Mario and Luigi not just being palette swaps of each other, but actually being distinctively drawn characters with a yeah. with unique abilities stems from this game. Um, yeah, it it's it, it's a weird second game, but it it did a lot to expand what Mario is beyond what the first game was. Yeah, and I, I, I think it deserves some credit for that. But uh, I, was the first time you played this game the Game Boy Advance version? No, we uh, I played the original back in the day. I'm pretty sure version. my first experience was the Game Boy Advance version. I, I remember having a friend who had the original Nintendo version. 
Uh, the Game Boy Advance version is a significantly better game because it's oh. just, you know, 20 years of improvements. I didn't know it was that different, to be completely honest. With you. It's, I mean, it's it's like, um, what's the best way I can put it? It, it? It's like the Super Mario All-Stars version of it. it. It's the same game, but like there's small quality of life. Oh, no, better better example is it's like the version of Perfect Dark that came to Xbox Live Arcade. Okay. It's the same game, but it looks nicer, and it has just like little quality of life improvements that you don't realize it unless you're super into the game. Okay, well, uh, that helped because I ended up really liking it. I played through the whole thing, yeah. and uh, I already knew that it wasn't Super Mario Brothers. It was a different weird thing, so I went into yeah. it expecting it to be not good, and I liked it a lot to be completely honest i trash on it because it's not a, a mario game and i love that mario formula so much but uh for what it's worth i liked it but it's still not a mario game so uh <laughs> of all of the mario games i think it also deserves b tier to be honest uh, no I, th I would give it b tier but i would put it ahead of the lost levels yeah lost levels might drop to c but we'll, we'll yeah. we're, we're gonna keep going here there's li listen all these games are good. I, yeah, I'm gonna. That's, that's I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to say any of these are bad. But yeah, none of these games are like straight up bad game. Don't play it. Like all right. of these games are better than a lot of games today. Yeah, it's true. You know, like true. the worst Super Mario Brothers game is head and shoulders above. The worst Sonic the Hedgehog game, the worst Mega Man game, the worst Call of Duty game, the worst Assassin's Creed game. You know, probably it's up there with the best Assassin's Creed game and the <laughs> yeah. best Call of Duty game. But yes. Uh, next up, I think, is Mario 3, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, None of the, the, this is, the Game Boy one isn't before that, right? Uh I don't know, because the, the release date for these games was screwy back then, because Super Mario Bros. 3 was out in Japan for like two years before it came to America. Oh, okay, true. Yeah. All right, so, so let's do... So so Mario Land was 1980, 1989. Okay. And Super Mario Bros. So 3 was... Might have been 1990 no, in 1980. America. 1988. In Japan. Oh, in America, it's 90. Yeah. So let's. Oh, I don't know about land then. It, is is land eighty nine in America? Land might be eighty nine because that that launched with the uh, the Game Boy. Land is eighty nine in America. Let's put land. Why is there two lands? I have no idea. <laughs> One of those lands is Yoshi's Island. <laughs> no, no, we'll do, we'll do we'll uh, do we'll do Luigi's Mansion. It'll be easier. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Super Mario Land. Yes. Um, that also a weird Mario game. Might be yes. this <laughs> might be up there with the lost levels. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was the first Mario Brothers game not developed by Miyamoto. This was actually developed by Gungpei Yokoi and the Game Boy team to make a Game Boy specific Mario game. And yeah. it's basically what happens when you tell somebody to do a cover of somebody else's song. <laughs> you know, you you get close, but you know something's not right. Like you know, this isn't the original. <laughs> I also think this was in development before Super Mario Bros. 2, the American version, had like some of the stylistic choices figured out. Yeah. So there's some weird shit going on. Mario still kind of looks like he does in the original Mario Brothers. Yeah. Um, but you got weird things like uh, when you step on a Koopa, he blows up and it could hurt you. Yep. <laughs> uh, the the fire flower is a rubber ball. That you right. bounce around the screen. Uh, there are shoot 'em up levels in this game. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like a like a like like you're flying like a, a spaceship. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. and the physics are weird and bizarre and don't yeah, really work. The physics right. are probably the weirdest in this game. Uh, it's definitely uh one of the worst Mario Brothers games. <laughs> uh, but. I don't know. What do I like less? Mario Land or Mario... I think Mario Land has some charm to it. More yeah. so than, than the Lost Levels. What do you think? I, I would agree. It has it has a much more distinct uh, level art. Because it's all Egyptian themed. Um, it, has, it has a really fun soundtrack. 
that I don't think yes, gets enough it credit. Whereas Lost Levels has the same soundtrack as the original game. Um, I, I, I would be inclined to... Go ahead. I, I think I'm going to move uh, Lost Levels down to C. And I'm going to okay. put Land at the bottom of B. Because I, it's right there with Mario Brothers 2. And both of these games are not Mario games. <laughs> I uh, agree with that. I think there's more i think there's more fun to be had it was super mario land and i think it had you know mario uh the lost levels is basically an expansion pack for super mario right. brothers whereas super mario land is genuinely trying to be a portable mario game i think that it being portable gives it a lot of points because that's yes. the biggest draw to this thing is it's mario but it's on a game boy yes um Fortunately for us, they did a better job later on. But before yes. we get to that, Super Mario Brothers 3, which is the best NES game. Yeah, this is S tier. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, I th believe that this is better than the first game in every sense of the imagination. I think it did uh, everything the first game did right and added just the right amount of newness to it to make it feel more complete. Like this is the basis for every single Mario game, 2d or 3d to this day. It has the best graphics out of any NES game. That's because it came out so late in the NES life cycle. Uh, you mm -hmm. can pick up a shell. That's cool. Yes. There's yes. slopes. You know, how everybody <laughs> loves slopes. Yep. Um, there, it, there's a lot they added a lot of depth in in super mario brothers 3 it's not number one in my heart but it is probably number two in my heart uh mm -hmm. but as a game it is significantly better than the original super mario brothers i would have an easier time suggesting super mario brothers 3 to somebody who's never played mario before than super mario brothers 1 the physics are a little cleaner and nicer there's a lot more to it it's a lot prettier looking there's a lot more you could do. There's a million more abilities. Uh, so you got the frog suit. You got the freaking uh, stone guy. You got the tanuki tail. There's like a lot of cool yep. shit. Yeah. Um, uh, and you got the warp whistle. Uh, all these different worlds that all look vastly different from each other. The level design is awesome. Uh, and you could still beat it very quickly if you want to. Or you could take your time yeah. and, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, go uh, explore all of the different levels. There's those like overworld bosses that like show up every once in a while that yep. you have to fight. You have an inventory that you can add uh, like uh, like power ups before you go into a level. It's awesome. There's like some strategy to it. It doesn't get much better than Super Mario Bros. Three. It, it, that is correct, sir. So uh, that is top of S tier so far. Yes. Yes. Uh, 1992 is when Super Mario Land 2 came out. Uh, okay. I think Super Mario World's first then, right? Yes. Because that was 1991 in America. Okay. I'm just double checking this list. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. That's a, that's a, is that a big gap between Mario games? Uh, well, it, again, it's weird. Cause, uh, so Mario 3 came out in 90. And then Super Mario World came out in 91. Mm -hmm. And then in Japan, it came out in 88. Uh, Super Mario 3 came out in 88. But then I believe Mario World came out in 90. Okay. Well, yes. now we're on Mario World. Mario yes. World is, I think, uh, uh, the easiest Mario game to suggest somebody to play who's never played a Mario yeah. game before. I think it's the, probably the most important Mario game for somebody to play. Um, I think it has maybe the best physics out of every Mario game. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't grow up with it. I played it way yeah. later because we didn't have a Super Nintendo. We had an NES. Yeah, and I think I think that's important to like. I mean, the ranking of Mario games it, it's always going to hinge on your nostalgia for the original. Uh, games when you played them back then and super mario world is always like a weird outlier for me at least because we were sega genesis kids and not super nintendo kids right uh, uh the reason it's so perfect to me is all the rom hacks people do 
<laughs> also, the button layout is fantastic. The spin jumping is great. Uh, uh, yeah. it, it gave us Yoshi. Um, it did. Another one with phenomenal level design uh, yeah, it, and the it world has, structure. It has its own unique uh, character itself. The, uh, the Goombas look completely different from all the other uh, games to the point where those are now completely different characters. I forgot what they're called Gal- now. Galoomba. Galoomba. Yeah, that's it. Um, it ha- it introduces the cape, which is completely different from how you flew in uh, Mario 3. Uh, all the levels are very intricate and very labyrinthian, and there are multiple ways to beat some of them, which lead to different paths. Uh, it's just a very open game. You know, it's it's you can just go to the right and beat the level, but... If you do that, you potentially miss so much of the whole experience. Yeah, and, and and there's a lot that the community built off of this game and is still building off of this game. If you go to yeah. Super Mario World Central or, or any of these like ROM hacking websites, they use this game as a base to make all these different wacky Mario games. You got all the Kaizo stuff where people just try to make insanely impossible Mario levels. And this is the, the this is probably the basis of Mario Maker was people yeah. making stuff out of Super Mario World. I it's definitely S tier. Yes. It, we have a moral dilemma because we love Super Mario Bros. 3 so much. Yeah. Uh, if, if we remove our our nostalgia from the equation, I think Mario World is above it. Uh, see, for me, removing nostalgia from the equation, it would be in between 3 and 1. With 3 being the be best? A, yeah, it would be, it would, Mario World would be a solid number 2. Why, so removing nostalgia, why is uh, Super Mario World better than Super Mario Three? No, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying Three is better than World. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're moving nostalgia. Why is Three better than World? I just think Three. Yeah, you know, I think uh, that sometimes the whole openness and labyrinthianness of Mario World works, and it's to its disadvantage. Okay. It becomes it often becomes too much and too complex, whereas Mario Three is still uh, relatively simple and straightforward. It's still that two button style Mario game. A lot of times, I feel like the extra buttons in Super Mario World aren't necessary. Like to this day, you know, I I don't think other Mario games really utilize the abilities that Super Mario Worlds introduce the way they utilize the abilities introduced in mario 3 yes you don't really spin jump in any other mario game besides yeah. world um mm-hmm. yeah so you're right about that i do think super mario 3 has a little bit of a difficulty spike on the eighth world uh yes but you are right about super mario world uh being a little labyrinthian towards the end it being a little hard yeah. to to figure out where you're going Fine. World is uh, right under Super Mario 3. And I suspect, listen, we're also doing 3D Mario games. We might have some more in S tier. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, There might be one (laughs) above that. I I said, uh, never mind. Uh, All right, next. Where do we got? Do we Uh, have Land? Super Mario Land 2. Yeah, Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. The first game uh, to introduce Wario into the series. Um, this is a very different game from the first Super Mario Land. This is yes. a proper Mario game. Yes. Uh, Mario looks like Mario. Uh, he's a yep. little big on the screen and the physics are bad and the hit boxes are also <laughs> bad, but it's significantly better than the original Super Mario Land. Uh, yeah. so it's good, but it's still not, uh, amazing. In my yeah. opinion. Um, yeah, I don't I've actually played less of this than I did the original. Mm-hmm. Um, but even still, like you can tell that there was a a clear desire to make this feel more like a Mario game that you've played on NES. So all the enemies look correct, um, all the all the 
icon blocks and level design looks correct. You know, it just it feels like playing it. It feels like a game made for a lesser system. And yeah. I think, you know, if you go into it thinking it's a Mario game, you're, you're going to be mildly disappointed by it because it doesn't live up to the same level as the other ones, as the console games. Yeah. Uh, I also think there's a weird thing where, like, if you die towards the end of the game, it resets uh, the golden coins that you have or something weird. Some weird thing happens mm-hmm. that makes it, like... It's like really hard to 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 beat it. Um, so I don't know. It's not it's not the best 2D Mario game. Um, yeah, I will put it above Super Mario Land because it is better than the original Super Mario Land, but it's not better than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes in B, yeah. just above Super Mario That's, Land. I can I can dig it. Uh, what's next? Uh, Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64. This game is oh, also incredible. Oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, whoa, wait, 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 Yoshi's Island, and then Mario, uh, Super Mario Yoshi's 64. Yoshi's Island. Can I add Yoshi's Island? Uh, you should be able to. They should, they should let you, like, add an extra... <laughs> I thought they did, but it doesn't look like they do. All right, so yeah. Luigi's Mansion is going to be Yoshi's Island. Uh, yeah. Yoshi's Island is great, but it is another one that's like not really a Mario game. <laughs> I would put it in A tier because... Uh, I was going to say that. It's a good platformer. Dare I say it's a great platformer. Uh, it doesn't play like a traditional Mario game, though, because you play as Yoshi, and you have all these different Yoshi abilities. Um and uh, Baby Mario is the worst character. <laughs> He's very annoying. He's very bad, yes. And as a father of two kids, I can tell you that sound grades on you. <laughs> it's it's interesting because like they took the ability that everybody loved so much in Super Mario World and they were like, let's make a whole game out of it. And uh, it's not the same. No, but it's still a fun no. game. It's still really good. It I've is. never played no, through is. the whole thing. I've only played a little bit of it. Um, but uh, it introduced a lot. It was very uh, 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 system intensive for a Super Nintendo. It kind of pushed it to yes. its limits. It uh, it used the Super Effects chip too. I See, believe. I was going to say that, Did but you... I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> uh, it it was used for all like the Super Advanced sprite scrolling that it did. There's all there's this weird like these weird like 3D bosses and stuff. Um, yeah. It's a great game, uh, but yeah, this is the first in A tier because it's good, but it's uh, not a Mario game. It's a little weird yeah. one. Uh, so on our list visually, Luigi's Mansion Three is Yoshi's Island. Uh, yes. Now we got Super Mario 64. Yes, uh, this okay. game is also incredible. Yes. Um. So here's the thing. Oh boy! In my heart of hearts, this game is an S tier game. Yeah. However, however, oh, okay. In my mind, it is an A tier game <laughs> because this is an N sixty four game through and through. All the good that means and all the bad that means. <laughs> What's the bad? What's the bad? Uh, control is dated because it was just the camera. It, 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 mainly the camera, uh, but also the analog stick sensitivity. The Super Nintendo, the sorry, the N sixty four analog stick is super sensitive. Yes. And a lot of the like, it really like you really had to like push it to make Mario run. If you like. Uh, tilted it slightly. He only like crept and like he would yeah. slowly walk. And then the more you put that, never really gets used again in any other Mario game. So that just feels like something to to demonstrate the capabilities of the N64 and the controller itself. 
Uh, it feels like a tech demo in a lot of ways because of that. You know, the, the legend is the N64 controller was designed around Super Mario 64 and only Super Mario 64. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just it, it it was so fun to play at the time. <laughs> So I I think it's an ugly game because they ran out of room and that's why they have such weird looking textures. They they just didn't have the yeah. space for like a lot of polygons, so they just made like some freaking uh what looked like Windows 95 backgrounds for like uh, yes. a lot of the textures and stuff. Um I'll say this is a a weird case where I prefer playing this game with a pro controller instead of the original N64 controller or one of the like Retro mm. Fighters controllers or whatever because yeah. of that thumbstick. And I think that a pro controller fixes a lot of those issues that you have. Uh, otherwise, it definitely needs an updated camera situation. Yes. And it's insane that Nintendo hasn't done that because I do think this is one of the best 3D Mario games and the ca- and it's hindered by that those camera controls. Yeah. I think it's um, its level design is incredible it's creativity is really unmatched with a lot of other mario games it's sense of scale and you know of just imagination is is through the roof it it, like so many other like 3d platformers came out especially on the n64 and none of them really looked or played like this yeah uh sheepish lord of chaos in the chat says best music out of all mario games it does have incredible yes. music yes, uh does. and yeah it's got a lot of weird like quirky uh characters and 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 like stuff in the levels that like uh no one else was doing this was the first yeah. uh 3d mario and and it was one of the first 3d games to come to consoles mm-hmm. and uh it was so revolutionary and game other companies had took so long to even catch up to anything close to what Mario 64 did. And, yeah. and, and there's still a lot of games that don't, that don't come close to still to this day. Um, yeah. but I'll concede that the, uh, camera is holding it back for sure. Yeah. Uh, I will put it at the top of a, Okay. I can I can live with that. Uh what's next? Uh Super Mario Sunshine. Okay, so this is one of those games <laughs> where I always say that uh I always said that uh it it it, it like it get, people crap on it too much. It's still a great game. Like 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 it's one of the worst 3D Mario games, but it's still very good and people give it too much yeah. crap uh then i replayed it and i hate a lot about it <laughs> <laughs> i still think it's what well, it's it's being one of the worst 3d mario games doesn't mean it's bad but there's a lot of shit in the game that uh that is really frustrating yeah uh being the worst 3d mario game is still good but when you see like what came before it and what K is coming after it, it really does cast it in a bad light. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I think what makes what works so well with Mario 64 is the level design. Even if you got a problem with the clunky N64 controls and whatever, the level design of Mario 64 is almost perfect. And yeah. Super Mario Sunshine doesn't have the same thing. There's some levels that are great, that are that are perfect, and there's some yeah. levels that are just wonky and weird and are frustrating and 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 don't work the way that you'd expect from a Mario game. There's a lot of cool ideas on display in Sunshine. Like I like the whole summer theme yeah. of it and the whole concept of Delfino Island because you know. Your usual Mario game, like every level is different. You know, you got uh, Forest World, Fire World, Ice World, Water World, whatever. This is all just a beach resort, baby. Mm-hmm. Just all hang out and have a good time. And what's cool is from the main Delfino Plaza, you can see all the levels you're going to go to. Like in the background and stuff. So it really does create this really cool sense of like you're in this one place 
to like, and you can go to anywhere in the place to have an adventure. Uh, so that's the part I really liked. Uh, I like, you know, the water effects still hold up to this day. Um, the idea of the flood and the things <laughs> you can do with flood are cool. The idea of it, right? The execution of it is the problem because they basically designed the entire game around it. Yeah. And you run into a lot of problems when you try to design a Mario game around something other than pure platform. Yeah, and this started the whole trend of uh, having a gimmick in every Mario, 3D Mario. Right. Like, 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 like we need to do some... We can't just have a Mario game with good level design. We need to add a mechanic, add like a, like a quirky character or a thing that Mario has to make the game different and and, and but in this case it was flood and it was fine but like it didn't need to be there and at least like the gimmicks they added to later games like made sense for what a mario platformer should be like galaxy the gimmick was like you know circular worlds and playing with gravity but like that makes sense in terms of like platforming and even cappy like you know made sense for a platforming game because like yeah you can possess people but you can also use cappy as a platform itself mm. and it can help you like get to places you normally couldn't reach yeah and the whole thing so. with with flood was to like hover and stuff and that uh hover she... and clean up dirt <laughs> yeah uh i mean there was still fun to be had here it yeah. was kind of fun to uh wash away all of the ink <laughs> in, in like a weird sort of uh cathartic way a, but a power wash simulator before I was power say wash that. simulator came out yeah uh but yeah uh, again it introduced a lot of issues that uh i never would have uh expected and that didn't have to be there in the first place yeah um i don't know where to put this um yeah. bottom of I mean, a or top of b I guess top of B. Okay. You know, I'm just because, you know, it's it's a good game, but there's a lot holding it back. It's like it's like what they used to say about us in school. You know, we were good <laughs> kids, but, you know, there's a lot holding us back. We're not applying yes. ourselves enough, you know. I, I, I think that it, it did a good job with the camera, mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, there were some other weird physics issues with, with it. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't exactly perfect. Was the camera inverted? I don't remember. I think there was a weird remember. thing with the camera. Yeah. Or I think Flood was just inverted. I don't know. Anyway, don't know. Uh, top of B. What's next? Uh, next is New Super Mario Brothers for the DS. So this game started a trend where they just ran a New Super Mario Brothers into the ground. However... <laughs> I think this game was very good. This game is very good. It's it, it takes it back to a simpler time when all you did in Mario games was run to the right and uh, jump over obstacles. Uh, so it was it was definitely a throwback game, but they added a lot of like cool new features to it that like s sort of made it more modernized. They gave you new power ups. Uh, it was on the DS, so you could bank your power ups on the bottom screen and then tap the screen to like use them when you needed them um yeah it was it was just it, it was an old school game and at a time when we hadn't seen a like a 2d side scrolling mario game in like 10 years by that point it it uh i i was very excited about this because yeah we haven't seen a, a side scrolling mario game in a really long time uh, and this uh, threw me back. I didn't realize how much I was missing original yeah. Mario mechanics until this game came out. Um, and I loved it. It was an awesome DS game. Uh, yeah. The only issue is that they just copied and pasted this game like four or more times. <laughs> yeah, well, they copied and pasted it, and then they, they would add like one one major change that we'll get into when we get to the next game in this series that like really really fucked it up <laughs> yeah i'm inclined to put this just under mario 64 above mar uh, uh, uh yoshi's island 
I would agree. This is okay. a very good game. Uh, if you were at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo this weekend at the Cradle of Aviation in Garden City, New York, uh, look for it. And if you see it, get it, because it's yeah. it's very good. I, I'll also say that uh, there's a community behind this game that does ROM hacks for this, too. So if you uh, nice. just As happen upon a DS emulator, you know? Yeah. Worth checking uh, out. It, it's According to Wikipedia, it sold 30 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling game for the Nintendo DS. I believe that. Uh, what is next? Super Mario Galaxy. Okay, this is uh, another incredible game. Yes. Uh, this game introduced the concept of taking Mario intergalactic. Um, but this is a concept and a gimmick that works because, like I said before, they use um, you know circular planetary platforms and uh gravity to they use those elements to enhance and and make challenging platforming moments like they put make it part of the platforming action of the game and they integrate it very well with mario's core skill set i don't think i played this one until the all-stars collection on the switch uh, yeah, and I still haven't that, beaten that, it. I got very far in it, but I haven't beaten it. Uh, yeah, that's when I spent the most time with it. Uh, I, I played it for like you know maybe twenty minutes back in the day. So it's still, but it still holds up. It's incredible. It's great, yeah, even with Joy Cons. It's an incredible game. Uh, yeah, it, it, it. I know that the gravity is like the gimmick and whatever, but it feels just like it's just a regular old Mario game yeah, that, that, where sometimes you mean. get lost in like a in like a circle <laughs> yeah that, that's what i mean like it it feels right it feels like a part of the mario series it doesn't feel like something that's just been slapped on because you know it's you know we need something new you know mario right. needs a gimmick like it, it, it works they, like they could put this in any future mario game and i wouldn't think it's a callback to galaxy i would just think it's a part of the series so where does this go uh maybe the bottom of s tier i'm with that yes i'm with that uh okay and now uh new got... super mario brothers way we okay yes. so i like this because it had uh, a real time co-op see i hate this game <laughs> <laughs> because it had real time co op. This was the thing I was talking about before that really throws a monkey wrench into it does. the whole new Super Mario Brothers, you know, gameplay style. Mm -hmm. Th this game on its own, if you're playing by yourself, the game is actually pretty challenging. It's one of the harder Mario games out there. Um, but it plays like you want a Mario game in, I think this was 2010. Uh, it plays like how it's supposed to play. Uh, we crashed picture's gone oh shit yeah i got no warning that that was happening uh okay yeah we're, we're getting we're getting effed in the chat i will attempt to change servers okay uh you do that i will vamp for a little bit for our podcast listeners um, what do you want to talk what do you want to tell them what do you want to tell well them I, I, I actually i brought this in here because i thought this was going to be like my in my intro gag for this week i bought a uh, duncan cold it's their special ground coffee uh specifically formulated for iced coffee oh. so you you brew it hot and you pour it over ice and you have instant nice coffee um what it does is it makes your coffee taste like water wait wait, wait. <laughs> so, so it's instant it's instant iced coffee you brew you brew it hot and then you pour it over ice and it basically it's oh. supposed to like instantly make the coffee cold, okay. but what it does is it instantly makes the coffee taste like water. That so, sounds like you didn't use enough grounds. I did exactly what the fucking <laughs> box said to do. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know what you want from me. All I'm telling you, oh hey, we're back. 
Um, don't buy this. Just buy regular uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee and make cold brew or iced coffee the traditional way. Don't yeah, buy don't Dunkin' Cold. Don't buy anything specifically formulated. To, don't buy any grounds or beans specifically for cold brew or or yes iced coffee because that's just that sounds like a scam. also this is expe- much more expensive than like regular ass ground coffee so uh i got tricked by clever marketing mm-hmm. don't be like me be a cautionary tale i'm the cautionary tale learn from my mistakes like playing super Ma- new super mario brothers we with your girlfriend at the time we almost broke up so many times because of this game same i had yeah. a similar experience uh, I think this was one of the first like let's plays or live streams we did was the original might have been uh, yeah. uh, Super Mario Brothers Wii. Uh, I I think the game is good and um, being able to do real time co op, it's it's difficult and it adds a layer that could that could break things. But I think that that's. That frustration is part of the fun if you're willing to, if, if you need to be a certain type of person in order to like not want to strangle your partner, uh, Homer Simpson stuff. Um, I mean, this is this is definitely one of those games where you have to play it with somebody who's at a similar skill level as you, if not the exact same skill well, level. Because if if one of you is better than the other, that's like that's gonna screw things up because the the screen doesn't move until you're right. both like moving at the same time. So if somebody's stuck, that person's gonna hold you back. I have had well, you can bubble, you can bubble, you can grab the other person. And I did grab you. the other person a lot and grab them and throw them and whatever. But I also yeah. had some times where you grab them and you throw them into a pit because you're just sick of them. <laughs> Yeah, and I like I like the weird meta stuff like that in the game. Uh, I'm very happy that it introduced real time co op, but th- yeah, you're right. It 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 becomes especially with four players. Fuck this game oh, with four yeah. players. Yeah, Two players, no, absolutely it's not. kind of fun. Uh, yeah. I like it. I want it to be a. What do you think? What do you where do you put this game? I mean, yeah, I guess a is a good place for it it's just you put it in a but the more players you add to your gameplay session lower it (laughs) okay i'm putting it above yoshi's island Uh, okay uh next up is gonna be is this galaxy 2 oh galaxy 2 okay so this game was a 10 out of 10 ign at the time and we didn't own it and I was yeah. like, no way this game's a 10 out of 10. That's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't, these IGN people don't know what they're talking about. And I think I was doing a midnight launch at GameStop, and it might have been like Call of Duty or something. And I w- yeah. we had two hours where the store was closed until the midnight release happened. And I was like, let me try this game. And I tried it on the little demo kiosk, and I played it for the whole two hours. It was fucking awesome. And that's yeah. the only experience that I had with uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2. I think I bought this for the Wii U when like they were doing downloadable Wii games for it. I think it was Galaxy 2. Um Yeah, I know this game is very fun. It's it's uh I don't want to say it's an expansion pack to Galaxy 1 because it does add a little bit more to the experience in particular Yoshi. Uh mm-hmm. that's a big that's a big difference. Um but I mean it, it is very much more of the same. If you liked Galaxy 1, you're going to like Galaxy 2. Um so I would put the put also put this in S tier, but like right next to Galaxy One. Yeah, I didn't really play much of it to be honest. I just know that it's very similar to Galaxy One. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm ill-equipped to rate this, uh, but I will put it right next to Galaxy One because they're they're the same game. I will um, say it makes no damn sense why this wasn't included in the uh, Mario uh, 3D All Stars pack. Yeah, none whatsoever. Like. It's it's the same. It runs on the same engine as Galaxy One. It plays the same as Galaxy One. They ported it over Galaxy One to Switch. They could do the same to this one. Doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's a cost thing. I don't think it's a resources thing. I just think Nintendo just gave up. <laughs> I don't know what the process is. Like I'm sure they have to play it a million times and get a lot of QA stuff going on to make sure that everything yeah. works perfectly. Um. But yeah, I'd imagine it wouldn't be that hard. Hopefully, 
they'll release a All Stars two. Yeah. Um. All right. What's next? Uh, Super Mario 3D Land. Okay, I liked this one too. Uh, this I, yeah. I think most people, I, a lot of people, don't like this one that much. Um, this this was a weird one. I remember when this came out, everyone's like, "Yeah, this game is fine" or whatever. It, it does some things, and then because the, like it had the traditional eight worlds, the, you know, the Mario eight worlds. But then after you beat World Eight, there was World Nine, and once people started getting to World Nine, everyone's like, "Yo." This is the best Mario game <laughs> ever made. Something about like that extra level, like just changed everyone's perspective about that game. I never got that far in this game, so I can't. I can't tell you. So World Nine made it so that you had to go back and collect the stars and whatever to make sure that you can yeah. unlock World Nine, and it also became way harder and stuff. So it it, it yeah. was a it, it was a it was a cool little change. It was a cool little extra feature for people who like uh, were, were were ready to do some post game stuff in uh, in 3D Land. Uh, also, it was a good utilization of the 3D on the uh, on the 3DS. Uh, yes, and it was just this was the first time we're getting uh, 3D Mario portably, so this was like uh, kind of mind blowing at the time. Uh, uh, yeah, for the depth of game you were getting on a on a portable Nintendo console. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. I kind of want to put it in A tier. Okay. Uh, where in A tier? Maybe right behind sixty four, or should we put it above sixty four? Right behind sixty four. I don't want to. I don't okay. want to make people too mad here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And then is next New Super Mario Bros. Two. Yes. Okay. This one is not as good. <laughs> no. Um. It's a 2D side scrolling Mario game, so like it's still good. Uh, but this one added the weird gimmick of trying to collect a million coins in the game. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think that added anything to the coin. The coins are stupid in Mario. Like, like you get lives and stuff, but like collecting them isn't fun or anything. It's just, you know, collecting coins in a Mario game is like it's just what you do, they're yeah. right there in front of you. Or you don't get them. If they're if they're yeah. in, if they're on your path, you get them. If they're a little out of your path, fuck them. You don't need them. So yeah. like the fact that they made the whole game coins, it was really weird. I I uh, it, it it didn't add anything to the game. It just it yeah. was literally just the, or, the new Super Mario Brothers, but now there's a bunch of coins everywhere. Yeah it it was weird busy work. Yeah. Yeah, and you needed and the is, coins in order to progress. I yeah. Think. Yeah, it, it was weird busy work in a series that you know up till that point never needed busy work. Like the yeah. platforming itself was enough, but something about like I guess during the development of this game, they're like, no, like there's there's been too many 2D Mario games. We need something different. I'm gonna put it in B, uh, just okay. behind uh, the American Super Mario Bros. Two. Okay. Uh, next up is, is it New Super Mario Bros. U? Yes. Uh, this one is, oh, this is another guy fucking copy and paste of New Super Mario Brothers. Uh, this time uh, they yeah. added, uh, uh, Baby Yoshis. Yes. Uh, and that's it? No, they added, like, a new power up here and there, but, like, was it enough to really make you want to play a whole new version of the game? No. Uh, this is going to go... Should it go behind New Super Mario Bros. 2 or in front of it? I guess behind it. No, in front of it. In front, in of, front it, of it. it, didn't, because, have, it yeah. didn't have the stupid you know, million coins busy work crap. You're right. Uh, I would also, on the same note, put New Super Luigi U right next to it because you know we talked about how uh lost levels is kind of like an expansion pack to the original game or like galaxy 2 is an expansion pack to galaxy 1 this is legitimately an expansion pack like, i wasn't even going to put it on the list up. at all to be honest because i thought it was just the same game but like some weird luigi shit like some weird <laughs> like extra shit it, it's like uh kind of like knuckles on sonic 3 yeah, 
it's just uh, the difficulty's higher, and you only have like ninety nine seconds to beat each level. I didn't even know. I I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I'll put it behind it. Yeah, sure. Uh, next up, Super Mario Three D World. This game is also phenomenal. Yes. Uh, uh, I, got I remember when this game when this game came out. Uh, a lot of publications were like, "This is low key the best game of the year." <laughs> <laughs> it was, and yeah. that year was stacked with uh, with 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 stuff. Twenty thirteen, yeah, that was the year of the the PS four and the Xbox One debuting. That's insane. Uh, and so games that came out in twenty thirteen: The Last of Us, Grand mm-hmm. Theft Auto Five. Bioshock yep. Infinite. Uh Battlefield 4. All right, so The Last of Us I think wins that year. But right behind it Super Mario 3D World. Yes. Um it, it, you know, I think when it came out cuz the Wii U uh didn't have like the big 3D Mario game and this was this was the 3D Mario game, but it wasn't like the big open world style that we'd seen in like 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. This was more of like a level based game that that um, Super Mario 3D Land was. This right. is the direct sequel to the 3D Land. So I think people were a little disappointed in that because it wasn't the big adventure that the previous game had previous games had been. Uh, but that said, this game gave you a lot for it for your money. Like there, there was a lot going on in this game. That like, and no two levels are the same. Everything is something unique. Um, I think it also had a world nine. Yeah, probably. Uh, this, this I loved. Uh, I used to play it with the TV off and just play it on the game pad, as if yeah. I had a little switch. Uh, it was incredible. I, I, I loved a lot about it. Uh, and I liked doing the post game stuff, trying to get more coins to unlock more stuff in world nine. Um, and it had really good multiplayer and where you yeah. wouldn't jump up. I mean, you kind of had to keep up with each other, but you didn't have to jump on people's heads. Um, it didn't feel like as much of a burden yes. this time around. Uh, we don't have Bowser's Fury on this list. I mean, this list was probably made before Bowser's right. Fury came out, but I will say, yeah, you could, uh, now it's got Bowser's Fury, which is a whole other game. <laughs> Bowser's Fury is also incredible. Bowser's Fury is definitely yeah. better than 3D World. It's a little shorter, but uh, it's it's awesome. If you've never played 3D World before, definitely get 3D World and Bowser's Fury because Bowser's Fury is worth it. Um, yeah. 3D World. Is this... Uh, uh, is this... Dare I say over 64? Hmm... I personally do not like it more than 64, but... Uh, no, I wouldn't put it above 64. It's going above the put DS it... one, the 3DS one, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, we're not doing Super Mario U Deluxe. We're not doing that. <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Um, yeah. Next, I think, is Mario Maker. It is. The uh, original Mario Maker is better than Mario Maker 2. Yes. I yeah. think... Of all the games on the Wii U, this was the best game for that system. It was the best use of the technology. It was the best use of the ha- of the gamepad. It was the best use of of the system overall. And it was uh, it, what do I, how do I want to put this? It it really did create like a cottage industry of you know independent developers and people get, like getting excited for mario again right you know because up until that point you know yeah people liked the mario games but once the wii u came out nobody cared um but this got people excited you know not just for mario but like nintendo as a whole again because it was such a unique concept that could only be done on the wii u yeah uh i think it's better than the second one because mm-hmm. of the uh, uh uh mystery mushrooms that give you all of the amiibo costumes any amiibo that they had they had a you could put that character in the game only for the original yeah. super mario Bros. play style but that's my favorite play style so that that worked perfectly for me um also the uh i think that the 100 mario challenge 
where you have to where you have a hundred lives to play through eight or sixteen levels, uh, yeah. is better than the endless mode because uh, I mean people ended up people who played it on Twitch ended up playing it endlessly anyway. They would show their streak of how many times they've beaten the hundred Mario challenge, but that gave you something to strive for. Uh, endless mode doesn't really give you a goal. Uh, yeah. So I don't like that. Um, and there's other things too, like Super, uh, Super Mario Maker 2 uh, added multiplayer, which I think is something that could greatly improve uh, on the Mario Maker formula. Uh, but it's shitty multiplayer. It's, it's, it's <laughs> Nintendo's terrible net code and, and, and it, and it, it, it's not fun it doesn't work half the time and and if it's only yeah. fun 50 percent of the time then it's not fun at all um mario maker 2 did add uh the link costume uh it added the super mario brothers 2 like costume and it mm -hmm. added uh the uh super worlds but it added those all in future updates uh, and those are all pretty good but I still think that the original Mario Maker has some magic behind it that they didn't ever capture in the second one. Right. I want to put Super Mario Maker very high. But the problem is, I, I so it's it's hard to market because it's about playing the, the levels. People think that they have to make the fucking levels, but you don't. You just have to play the levels. And also... Somebody will make levels for you. <laughs> yes, but also uh, some of the levels can be very hard and not everybody's a level designer. <laughs> so, yeah. like, uh, there's a lot of weird and wacky shit that would that is in Mario Maker that would never make it into a Mario game, which is awesome in some cases and, and weird and, and off-putting in other cases. So it's hard for me to recommend Super Mario Maker to people because you're not guaranteed to get a perfectly designed Mario game, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. With It's like, personally, I think it's one of the best Mario games ever. I want to put it in S tier, but it's hard to recommend to people. So I kind of uh, want to put it in A tier. No, I would give you S tier because all right. for all the reasons you just said. I think, I think this game tapped into something that no other like we had little big planet before we had this game mm -hmm. the idea of like a game that like was about creating levels and sharing them with the community like that existed before this game and then this game came along and basically showed the world like no this is how you do it and people went nuts for this like people had playstation 3s and didn't go nuts for little big planet mm -hmm. the way they went for the way they went nuts for this game on a system that nobody had. Yeah. I, I, I wish so, it was a little bigger than it was, especially the second one. I thought the second one was yeah. for sure to pop off like crazy. And it did, but I thought it could have been way bigger than it than it was. Um, right. Can we place the second one? We'll, we'll jump ahead and place the second one now that we're, we were already talking about Yeah, where about do you want it. to place it? It's definitely less than the original Super Mario Maker. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of want to put it in A, uh, but... There's all these other great games in A. Uh, like the bottom of A? I'm putting it above New Super Mario Brothers because you can put all of New Super Mario Brothers in Mario Maker 2. That's true. Because <laughs> it, it uses true. New Super Mario Brothers physics for all yeah. of the play styles except for the 3D world play style, which I hate. I hate the 3D world play style. Right. Uh, and there's so much lost potential there. They could have added so many other play styles and they went with 3d world for some reason you know and they made yeah. it a, a side scroll it's i don't know anyway uh the last one that we, i'm not doing the 3ds mario maker that one doesn't even count <laughs> uh that's a trash I version didn't wasn't there like a feature missing from yeah the whole online <laughs> yeah like you could that. do some weird shitty online stuff i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna put it in d uh <laughs> I'll put it above the original Mario Brothers. How about that? Okay. Uh, Mario Odyssey. S tier for sure. Yes, 100% S tier. I would say this is the best 3D Mario game. Yeah, it's for sure the best 3D Mario game. Uh, yeah. It's the easiest to recommend to people because it's modern. Yes. 
Uh, it's one of those games where it's only as difficult as you want it to be. There's some difficult yes. moons that you get in the game, but you don't have to get all mm -hmm. of them. You, there's 999, and you uh, you can just skip the the 10 that are really hard. Um, yeah. It, it uh, th 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 it's very simple to wrap your head around, but yeah. you can do some crazy shit with Mario. Uh, and the game rewards you for things that you wouldn't expect, like accessing areas that you thought should be impossible to get to. The game's like, good yeah. job, you you did it. Here's some coins or whatever. Yeah. Um. It it does away with the live system, which you think is weird when you think about it, but it handles it in a way that I think is very. Uh, modern and unique to Mario. Uh, it introduces Cappy, of course, and it does so in a way that at first it might feel like a gimmick, but the more you play with it and the more like you get used to it, you realize that it's just an extension of the abilities that Mario can already do. Right. And not just an add-on, you know, because they felt necessary to give him an add-on. Uh, the level design is incredible. The level variety is a very unique yeah. um and it's not something you would expect from a mario game he goes to he just he just fucking goes to new york city <laughs> yeah it was like all size people there anyone who says new donk city in the comments shut up you know what i mean uh it, there's a dark souls boss in the game for some reason yep <laughs> it's it's uh, very weird but it feels yeah. like a grand epic uh the only other one that feels like that is galaxy um yeah and uh, there, yeah, there's just there's so much packed into it, uh, and yeah. you can you can uh, y y there's all these isolated worlds, and you can get as many moons as you want in those worlds. You don't have to select the one that you want and leave the world when you're done. You know, yeah, it's just super yeah. streamlined and great. Yeah, uh, you just you just go at your own pace, play at your own pace, do what you want in the game. It, it's very similar to like Breath of the Wild in a sense, where like that just game just lets you be you. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's you know it's it's much faster and much more action uh, packed than Breath of the Wild is because it's still like an action platformer. Uh, so this is S tier for sure, and it's the best 3D Mario game. Now, how does it compare to the 2Ds? In S tier mm. right now, we have number one is Super Mario Bros. Three, then we have World, and then we have Original Mario Brothers. It's definitely better and, than Mario Maker. I'm not including Mario Maker. Yeah. Uh, and here we come into the problem where uh, 2D Mario and 3D Mario kind of are their own separate beasts in a way. This is the first time where I feel conflicted about that. At the whole rest yeah. of the tier list, I haven't had a problem putting 3D games over the 2D games. But now yeah. sitting in S tier with the best 3D Mario game, I'm having a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's like, you know, Mario 3, Mario World, and the original are like their own thing. And then Mario Odyssey is something very different. Yeah. It has 2D side scrolling, whether you actually have the Mario 1 sprite in certain parts, but yeah. I don't know. I'm putting it top of S. Fuck it, dude. If I'm recommending okay. a Mario game to somebody who's never played Mario yeah, before, this is the one you're recommend. One. Yeah, yeah, especially these days. Uh, if we had a Switch 2 or a new console, it'd be harder to recommend uh, new uh, Super Mario Odyssey over, like, World or something. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I, right now, if somebody's like, I've never played a Mario game before, what should I play? Fucking pick up Super Mario uh, Odyssey. It's, 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 a, it's still th the first game I suggest for the Switch. Well, there's still... Yeah. The two games I suggest everybody needs to get for the Switch came out the year the Switch came out. Breath of the Wild yeah. and, <laughs> and Super Mario Odyssey. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole tier list. The only thing that is not on here is Bowser's Fury, uh, which is another one I would recommend to people if somebody said I mean, they haven't played a, a Mario game before. I would put... I mean, it's you can only get it with uh, Super Mario 3D World. So yeah, I so would I just assume keep it as part of that. Yeah, I I agree. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna re recite the whole list, but I'll say S tier from bottom to top, 
We have Mario Maker, the original Galaxy 2, then Galaxy 1, then the original Super Mario Brothers, then Super Mario World, then Super Mario 3, and then Odyssey to top it off. Yes. And this is the official Wolf Den uh, Mario ga- mainline Mario game tier list. Uh, most of them are phenomenal games. The only ones yeah. that we think are a little bad are... Uh, uh, the Lost Levels, the Japanese Mario 2, uh, mm-hmm. and Super Mario Maker 3DS, and the original Mario Brothers. Put it to you this way. If we did this with Sonic the Hedgehog, there will be a lot less S-tier games. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Beat em ups in the chat says, so are we supposed to imagine Mario Kart is S-tier, or... Will, where would you put Mario Kart in this? Uh, I, that, that's a hard one, because... No, it's not. Mario Kart... Mario Kart, in theory, is a great game. It's a perfect party game. It's a perfect, um, you know, my first video game. It, it's, you know, pick up and play. It, it, it does everything you want it to do. The problem is when you actually play Mario Kart and you have any sort of video game skill, that gets mm-hmm. thrown out the window because the game just says, fuck you when you yeah. play. Uh, uh, and I, I, Speaking from personal experience, I actively am getting worse at the game the more I play it. Yeah. I, I feel that. I, I would put Mario Kart below the Lost Levels because I would rather play any the Lost Level anything that's the that's C and up. I would rather play any of those than Mario than any Mario Kart. Yeah. The D tier games here, yeah, I don't really. I'd rather <laughs> play Mario Kart. Maybe that's it. That's the tier list. Yeah, there Thanks you go. For being here with us. Now we should talk about some actual gaming news. Yes. And we got to blast through it because we wasted a shit ton of time on talking about We Mario. always do that when we do the tier list. <laughs> but before we do that, I want to thank the people that we uh, ignored this whole time. Um, God, we missed a lot. Where did, we, where did I leave off? Uh, va- 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 Paradox. V- Valiant Paradox. Thank you for the six months. Miss Tech Zone, thanks for the 35 months. Nico Moso, thank you for the 11 months. Sea Soul, thank you for the 22 months. A Rod Dragon, thank you for the 12 months. Super Mario World is S tier. We did that. We got there. Dark Type, thanks for the 100 bits. Super Mario Sunshine is the Mario is the Mario game of all time. <laughs> You're, he's right. Uh, LJ with 13 months. A 13 months. Who says 13 is unlucky? Nobody does. We crashed again. Are you there? You're muted. Why are you muted? I don't know. I didn't oh, touch now, anything. Now you're not. You touched something because now, now you're not muted all of a sudden. I didn't! <laughs> uh, it's going to take me. For some reason, it took an awfully long time to stop the stream before it started again. Huh. Am I VPNing? Yeah, I am. I don't understand why this happened. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. F- I, I can't really thank wanna... people because they're all here live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's. I'll chat. Well, I guess I'll fucking change the the location server again. again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in Chicago now. All right. Hey, yo, Chicago. All right. Let's see, we're, we're back. In... We're back up. Hey, uh, hey everybody. Chris BX, thanks for the 48 months. Woody, thanks for the five months. And Ozols, thanks for the thousand bits. That's a lot of bits. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what's uh, the actual news this week, Will? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, what's the we'll news this with- week that's so unimportant that we did a whole Mario tier list? We'll start with multiverses. Uh, everyone's favorite Smash Brothers clone of the the current era. Uh, multiverses, the Warner Brothers ensemble fighting game, whose free open beta began last week, will have its first season of content delayed to an uns- unspecified later date. Uh, the delay also includes the release of Morty from Rick and Morty, a playable character originally announced for an August 9th launch. Uh, the same day season one was to begin, Rick was supposed to join the game during an unspecified later date during the first season. 
Uh, we know that this might be disappointing for some and want to assure our community that we are dedicated to delivering new and exciting content uh, that delights players. Uh, player first game said on Twitter. Uh, so, so, so the, yeah, this. Yeah. Wait, this also. I thought this also was the one that had LeBron James. Like the, I think the update. Le- uh, f- no, LeBron is unlockable by complete or by paying seven dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, this game looks bad, and and people are having fun with it, which is fine. But uh, I still haven't touched it. I mean, it's free to play, so I feel like I gotta try it's, it. It's in beta right now. I feel right. like that's important to stress. Um, and it looks like they're not in any rush to take it out of beta <laughs> because they delayed season one. I mean, I feel like these companies look at Smash Brothers and they're like, oh, easy formula. We got this. We can do that. Yeah. They don't realize Smash Bros. has like 30 years of development behind it. Yeah. Uh, So so like you can't just you can't just fart out uh, a a game with your characters. You know, it it doesn't doesn't work. I will say that like this, this definitely has a much better presentation than the nickelodeon smash brothers has because this actually has voice acting Mm -hmm. uh from actual like from like you know kevin conroy uh the guy who does bugs bunny's current voice tara strong uh the Maisie williams is back as Arya stark some reason she's in the game uh (laughs) yeah so there's like effort behind this yeah i like other versions I definitely think it looks a lot better than the Nickelodeon one for sure. Yeah, uh, and it's that one's sixty dollars. This one is yeah. free to play, <laughs> which I think is great. Uh, yeah. and I'm interested in trying it, but yeah, uh, I I, I can, haven't gotten a chance. And you can join the over ten million people who are playing wow. uh, at the time of writing. At the time of writing, per Eurogamer, ten million two hundred ninety-two thousand nine hundred sixty-nine players have already nice. flocked to the IP riddled Smash Fest. Uh meanwhile there are currently 42,133 players thrashing and crashing their way through the game on Steam. Uh we already knew the game was doing well but this is quite the debut. Perhaps its appearance at Evo 2022 <laughs> has bolstered the game's profile even further. Uh if you have yet to do battle against uh, the likes of Bugs Bunny or Harley Quinn uh, here's what they said about the game. They spent five minutes in multiverses over the weekend, uh, which turned into 10 minutes and then an hour, and then it just kept going. So, yeah, people people are digging this game. Uh, it Also, I think Warner Brothers uh, had a decent prize pool with with uh, the, the yes. EVO event. Uh, the last I saw, it was uh, being memed that, uh, you know, basically any game that has support from the developers is going to have a bigger prize pool than smash brothers games. Um, yes. So, uh, here's the meme that I saw. Uh, MVD got 17th in doubles multiverses. I think I'm pretty sure this is doubles mm-hmm. cause it says at, he, he did it with, with pungulator. Uh, yeah. and he MVD got a thousand bucks immediately PayPal to him. Once, once wow. he got seventeenth, and Hungry Box by comparison uh, got fifth place in melee at CEO and got seventy five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! So they, uh, yeah. So it seemed like it's more lucrative to be a professional multiverses player than it would be for yeah. Smash Brothers. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, but I don't know if there's yeah. like a reason to want to get that great at multiverses because there's some weird shit going on. Like there's super unfair, like like a like like a, like a, a true combos that you could do that just you could pick yeah. a character just completely obliterate somebody and they don't have a chance to react or anything. Uh, yeah, there's, I, there's a lot of broken of, balancing issues. There's also the I've hit heard, boxes are broken in, in, a, in a way that yeah. just are random. I've heard Bugs Bunny in particular is very OP and like you just wreck house as Bugs Bunny. I do see so, that. Yeah, I see a lot of yeah. wacky true combos with Bugs Bunny. I feel like though this is this looks like a game that like the developers and Warner Brothers in particular like believe in and want to make it like an evergreen game and like have people play it. So 
I mean, I think they learned a lot from Mortal Kombat because that's been an Evo staple for years, especially since they took over. So now they have, you know, a Smash Brothers competitor, which is a different market from like your traditional fighters like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's another avenue that they can they can get to. I just don't. We crashed again, I think. I just yeah. don't trust. Uh, I don't trust Warner Brothers is the problem. Yeah. Uh, I, they, I, they've I, made. I could yeah. see Warner Brothers just completely giving up on it. Yeah, they're they're very they've become very bad with like uh you know, honoring like the games that they put out and like supporting them for years to come. They stopped supporting like even Arkham Knight like once the P- once the PC version was out and stable, they like stopped supporting it. I mean, Mortal Kombat got support for a while, but like you know, that's also because it had a community behind it. Um, also with all the crap going on at like the higher ups at Warner, um, you know, they canceled Batgirl and that movie was done. (laughs) So who's to say they're not going to just, there have been rumors of them selling off their gaming division for years because they are in so much debt. So I would not be surprised if like, that's what they say, like shuts down this game. So uh, I realized I was never connected to the VPN. You know how when I'm not connected to the VPN, that shit happens? That I was just yep. never connected. So that explains That's why. That. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on from multiverses. Yes. Uh, Tencent Holdings uh, plans to, t- to raise its stake in French video game uh, developer Ubisoft as the Chinese gaming giant pivots to the global gaming market uh According to four sources directly uh, spoke to r- routers, routers, Reuters, Reuters, that's Reuters. What that's what I Reuters. always heard it as Reuters. Yes. Uh, China's largest social network and gaming firm, which bought a 5% stake in Ubisoft in 2018, has reached out to the French firm's founding Guillaume family and expressed interest in increasing its stake in the firm. Uh, it is not clear how much more Tencent wants to own it in Ubisoft. Which is currently valued at 5.3 billion, but Tencent aims to become the single largest shareholder of the French company with an additional stake purchase. Two of the sources said, speaking on a condition of anonymity, Tencent is holding uh, is hoping to buy a part of the additional stake in Ubisoft makers of Assassin's Creed um, from the Guillermo family, who which owns 15% of the firm. So you know, TLDR, Tencent wants to basically control more of Ubisoft than they already do. Uh, this is a big deal because Tencent is already the largest video game publisher in the world. They have stakes in many uh, Western developers, even I think even in like EA and Activision. Um, they're also a Chinese company, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding that. With, uh, with all that comes with a Chinese-based company. Uh, and this is also Ubisoft, who are just as bad, if not worse, than Activision when it comes to, you know, shitty, toxic work environments. So why isn't there a big... Like, Ubisoft uh, was ready to, like, fight over the last time they were going to have a majority shareholder. Yeah. Why is this different? Why are they okay that, with Tencent and not the me. other like, the other company that was going to do it? Yeah, because like Vivendi almost like bought them up, bought them out, and they like fought to stop that, and they did. That was considered um, a hostile takeover, and this yeah. for whatever reason is just yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, I think even EA tried to like do something with that, and they said no. Of uh, this, they're just letting it happen, which is yeah. odd because the Gumo family like will hold on to this company with every last breath that they have like they they founded this and they're gonna they're gonna run it into the ground (laughs) so uh maybe it's because vivendi is known for like uh, taking over a company and then selling it off or like ripping it to shreds and just trying to turn a profit on it and tencent is mostly a game company so they uh just want to own every game company (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so maybe Tencent wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for Ubisoft, but Vivendi would have been a bad thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. But uh, to me, it seems like they should be just as upset if Tencent wants to own yeah. most of the shares. I mean, I th- I feel like people should be a little scared of Tencent. Tencent owns, like, most 
of the games industry right now. They I don't they own Epic or they they own most of Epic. Yeah, they they have a majority share in a lot of these giant companies. Yeah. Riot I I think as well. Yeah, which are two huge like. game companies. So yeah. it's uh it's scary. Yeah. Uh But who cares? It's Ubisoft. Fuck them anyway. <laughs> yeah, they uh, was the last good Ubisoft game. <laughs> What was the last good Ubisoft game? Yeah. Uh, no, seriously, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the last one I played. I think Chat, the last what's one the I played last was Watch Dogs good... 1. That's so long ago. It, it was either Watch Dogs 1 or Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4 for me. Which one's the American one? Was that 5? Five? 5. I played 5, and I didn't like it that much. It was okay. Yeah. It was 4. It was just like 4, which was just like 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Beyond Good and Evil Two. Remember Speaking this game? of Ubisoft bollocks, <laughs> after six years after it was announced, Beyond Good and Evil Two finally has a lead writer. <laughs> so yeah, it's been si- what did you say? Six years? Six years since it was announced. I think it was been in a development longer than that. I think the trailer uh, was week- five years ago. Yeah. In a tweet uh, yesterday, Sarah Aranello announced that she was joining the game as the game's lead writer. Uh, she had previously worked as narrative designer for Blizzard on World of Warcraft and at Volition, uh, the studio responsible for Saints Row. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 was officially announced in 2017 at E3. The game will serve as a prequel to the original game with promises of being able to explore alone or with friends in its massive, ambitious world. Uh, beyond that announcement, there has been nothing meaningful uh, shown since. Got some cool concept art and another look at the game in 2018. Um, that was the last time anyone saw a- anyone saw the game. Um, and oh, sorry, the last time we saw the game, it gave us a glimpse at Jade from the first game, seemingly as a villain. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the director left in 2020, leaving the game status up in the air. Uh, yeah. This it, is a uh, it's yeah. a beautiful looking game uh, fr- from the trailer, yeah. but I I mean it's a cinematic trailer. Uh, they have a lot of ambitions here. It seems like, mm-hmm. but uh, I feel like this cinematic trailer is nothing at all. What's gonna come of the final product? Yeah, I mean the the final product was like like a pet project for uh, Michelle Ansel, the creator of Rayman. Uh, Ubisoft never really believed in the first game or even really cared about it. Uh, it got good reviews at the time, but like didn't sell very well. So just like, eh, fuck this. We're not going to do anything more with it. Uh, and then, you know, sheer force of will, they said, all right, we'll make another one. But then just didn't. I don't think they care about this game at all. I don't think they care about this as much as they do like their main franchises or that stupid fucking boat game they've been trying to make for <laughs> a decade at this point. It's a shame because uh, there's yeah. a lot of potential here, uh, but mm-hmm. I have little faith because uh, it is Ubisoft. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, again, it's one of those situations where they spent so much on a cinematic trailer. We have zero gameplay. It's been five years. Something's up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But, but, uh, I mean, it just got its lead writer now, so I guess they're starting. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, guess. All right, Steam Deck. Now we got Joy-Con controller support to go along with iOS's uh, Joy-Con controller support. Yes, Joy Cons have been able to function as on PC for years now. The French site Nintendo Actu uh, first figured out how to make them work back in 2017, but that was in a limited implementation with only one of the two controllers usable in single player games. Uh, get these ads away from me uh the official steam support is much more robust however making them usable both individually as mini game pads and combined into pairs and according to some uh user comments with remappable buttons joy con support is included in the latest steam beta update which means you'll need to uh opt into the steam client beta to do so hop into your steam settings and look for beta participation under the account menu hit the change button and select steam beta update and then restart your device and you'll be on your way 
Uh, on the hardware side, you'll also need a USB Bluetooth adapter, uh, or have the motherboard, or have a motherboard with Bluetooth built in in order to actually make the connection with the Joy-Con. Wait, 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 wait. That's okay. That's talking about Steam OS on a Linux machine. I don't think that's talking about a Steam Deck. Does a Steam Deck have Bluetooth? Yes. Oh, okay. it's talking about it's talking about a computer in general. Steam. Okay, okay. I, I'm I'm fucked up. It's not Steam Deck <laughs> has Joy-Con support. It's Steam itself. The 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 application on your computer oh, has Joy-Con oh, support. Oh, okay. So your computer that you built might not have a Bluetooth c- controller in it. This computer okay. that I'm streaming from doesn't have Bluetooth. I need a little dongle. So, okay, that makes total sense. Uh, a okay. Steam Deck should be just That's fun. different. Yeah. Yes. That's different. It did say something about um, Linux. Uh, a couple of users have complained in the comments about issues with Linux support. If you're in that boat too, uh, you might find some help there. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, that, the, that, that's, a, yeah. I mean, that's a little scary because Steam OS on, on the Steam Deck is Linux based. It's Linux. I'd mm-hmm. imagine that it works just fine on the Steam Deck. But if you want to use it on the Linux part of the of the Steam Deck, there might be some issues. Yes, that's what it sounds like. Uh, but I feel like you know, Valve appears to be all in on their Linux based OS, so mm-hmm. it should be a matter. It should only be a matter of time before that gets ironed out in, as well. Steam itself has phenomenal controller support to the point where yes. uh, a lot of games and even emulators will tell you. Uh, if you want controller support in their game, add it to Steam as a non-Steam game and then do the controller shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So this is good that it now has native mm-hmm. Joy-Con support. That's pretty cool. So this might be a thing. This might be good for stuff like Dolphin and, and for, for, for yeah. Wii emulation. Uh, so good. This is good news. Uh, let's read some notifications here. We got Rock and Val with yes. 25 months. Hello, Bob and Will. Hope you are both well. Can't wait to go to Long Island Retro Game Expo and buy stuff I don't need and to see you guys and watch the panel. Thank you, Rock and Val. Thank you. We will see you there. It'll be a fun day. Yeah. Uh, Oslo's with 100 bits says, that's what you get for putting Odyssey higher than Super Mario Brothers. I guess it's, uh... When we crashed. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes hard truths have to be had, you know? Yeah. You know, no regrets. Do it again. Uh, if push came to shove. Splatoon 3 is getting a direct. Yes. Uh, the next Nintendo Direct will focus on Splatoon 3. The presentation will take place tomorrow, August 10th at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. Uh, Nintendo revealed on Monday morning. It will run for 30 minutes. Like all Nintendo Directs, it will launch on Nintendo's YouTube channel as a pre-recorded video. I will the new not Nintendo be Direct will. Up. Yeah, it will come just about a month before the game's official launch on September 9th. It's unclear exactly what Nintendo will show in the video, but announcements could include new weapons, maps, or even modes. 30 minutes is uh, significant. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping for some single-player stuff. I suspect yeah. there's going to be a lot of multiplayer because that's what most people are buying this game for. And yes. uh, that's a pretty good uh, eSports presence, so people are probably... Yeah most excited about the multiplayer but i want to see a little bit of single player stuff i want to know story and whatnot because that's what was most interesting to me about the initial reveal of splatoon 3 uh-huh yeah uh, yeah i'll watch this after it comes out after whenever i wake up tomorrow yeah uh, and i suspect it's gonna be pretty fun but uh nothing uh we're probably gonna talk too much about because we're not yeah big splatoon guys <laughs> Uh, then there was the Pokemon Presents. I don't want to talk about it at all. We're not talking about Pokemon Presents. All right. Uh, yeah. Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon Go's got new stuff. Unite. Whatever. Did you, were you particularly interested in anything about this? Because nobody has heard your opinion yet. Uh, I mean, honestly, I watched it while I was doing dishes, so I was half paying attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, Does it make I mean, you want the game anymore? The problem with the Pokemon Directs is that like they front-load it with all like the side game crap that like <clears throat> nobody really cares about 
Right. And then when they get to like Scarlet and Violet, by then I'm like, okay, uh, I do think it's cool that you get to ride the legendary Pokemon as motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Um, I don't know. I think I'll, you know, I wasn't planning on getting these games to begin with. Uh, I guess if I was, I would just wait till they came out and see what everybody has to say about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's where I'm at. All right, rapid fire. Idos wants to bring back Deus Ex. You're interested. Yeah, basically, uh, uh, Venture Beat writer Jeff Grubb recently commented that he's heard rumblings that Idos Montreal uh, wants to bring back the Deus Ex franchise. Reportedly, the developer wants to do what Cyberpunk 2077 couldn't do, which likely means that Idos is aiming to deliver a more polished and engaging experience. Uh, may hear more about a new Deus Ex officially once Embracer Group's acquisition of Eidos Montreal from Square Enix is complete. Uh, so yeah, Eidos Montreal made the most recent Deus Ex games, Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution, which I have played a little bit of, and Mankind Divided. Uh, both of those games, uh, very good games, very well liked, uh, very polished games. Uh, Unfortunately, they were owned by Square Enix at the time, who just did not care for anything <laughs> developed in the West. And uh, I believe canceled Deus, the third Deus Ex game so that Idos Montreal can work on Guardians of the Galaxy instead. Um, but now that Square Enix doesn't own them, they can make a whole new Deus Ex game. Maybe they'll tie it back to the original 90s Deus Ex games Do that you think uh, Warren they have Spector made. Do you think they have the capability to do what Cyberpunk couldn't? <laughs> I don't think they do. I think that they'll make a good game, but I don't think they'll be able to do what Cyberpunk couldn't. I think there's very few studios that could do what Cyberpunk tried to do. Well, I think I think they can pull off something comparable. I I think, you know, I I won't be as ambitious as Cyberpunk. But I think in terms of delivering a first-person RPG with a cyberpunk aesthetic, I think it'll give people exactly what they want. It'll give everyone ex exactly what they're looking for in that type of game, okay. where cyberpunk tried to be too many things. Cyberpunk tried to have way too much depth that just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think, yeah, I don't think Deus Ex will reach that same level of depth no but but i think it'll be a polished they, game that'll be good <laughs> i think i think they'll make a game that they they know they're capable of making rather than a game that you know they weren't capable of making right uh there's a live action pac-man movie i saw this on twitter and i said oh no yeah uh yeah i hope this was a joke but no no it's it's being reported on by the hollywood reporter and they're they're a legitimate the Hollywood publication. Uh, the project hails from Bandai Namco Entertainment, the company behind Pac-Man, as well as games like Galaga and Tekken. And Way Wayfair Studio, the production company founded by Justin uh, Baldoni and Steve Sorowitz, uh, first, just first introduced in 1980, originally called Puck-Man in Japan. Uh, <laughs> Pac-Man was a coin-operated staple. The game is set in mazes, blah, blah, blah. You've all played Pac-Man. Uh, the game beget merchandise, several sequel games like Ms. Pac-Man and two television series. Uh, the project will be based on an original idea from Chuck Wilson, the writer of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, of Lightbeam Entertainment. Uh, Baldoni, Manu uh, Gargi, and Andrew Kaloff will produce on behalf of Wayfair Studios with Tracy Ryerson developing. Williams and Tim Kwok uh, will produce on behalf of Lightbeam. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it just stop, dude. Like, they yeah, kind of made the guy stop no way. trying with these friggin' video game movies that have no business being movies. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the time for Pac Man is like so far past. Like, I get well, like Pac Man is timeless. Well, like, now's now's the perfect time. Will we have a uh, a remake of uh, Pac World or whatever the fuck it's called? Yes, <laughs> coming out. We also have Pac Man Repacked. Yes, I don't know. It's like it, uh, an animated Pac-Man movie. Totally can get behind that. I think there you can do something pretty fun with that. Live action Pac-Man movie? GTFO. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog should, shouldn't even be a live action movie. Just for the record. Did you see the second but, one? 
I did not, and it's I have Paramount Plus. I should get on that. I, I almost that bought too. the the Blu-ray set because the the Steel Book is the is basically a movieified version of the Genesis box art for Sonic Two Ooh. with the, the checkerboard background. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That looks good. Uh, okay, we got to blast it. Ninety nine percent of Netflix can... subscribers haven't tried its games yet. Who uh, was a surprise? <laughs> I mean, it is a surprise. I mean, uh, so Netflix games average about 1.7 million users per day. A sliver of Netflix's 22, 221 million subscribers globally. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made like a big push to get to like announce that like, hey, we got games now. You can play games if you're subscribed to Netflix. Um, and like 1% of people are using it. Like... Sony canceled their stupid uh, accolades feature because nobody was using it. And Netflix is bleeding money right now. <laughs> so basically what this is telling me is that this isn't going to last very long. They must have more plans that they haven't uh, executed yet to f- fix this, but uh, I have no faith in them. They, th- uh, According to the article, they acquired three different indie game studios to bolster their game development. Oh God! So th- those are going to go get shut down <laughs> real soon. EA tweets. Uh, oh no, that happened already. Oh no! Oh yeah, no, no we read that the, one already. Did we? Yeah. Uh, the t- we read about the tweet, but uh, yeah, there's uh, more to it, I guess. During during an earnings call, EA CEO Andrew Wilson uh, reassured investors. That games are still a major part of the company despite what it says on twitter uh as we think about single player games we think it's a really really important part of the overall portfolio that we deliver in fulfillment fulfillment with core core motivations uh but then uh where was it someone else like in the earnings call like basically downplayed it and said yeah but most of our stuff is multiplayer (laughs) The way we think about this is really less about which game and more about which motivations these games fulfill. So we know that our players, they have these core motivations, inspiration, escape, social connection, competition, self-improvement, creation. These things that bring us together as players of games and the creation of worlds and the building of characters and the telling of stories is really important in the fulfillment of some of these motivations. That doesn't fucking tell us anything. (laughs) <laughs> that's uh, a, a walk around the problem is what that is yeah uh well further in the earnings call ea cfo chris sue said as to think about the model impact and the financial impact that the first thing to always keep in mind is that live services still encompass over 70 percent of our business and that has been proven very reliably very reliable, uh, highly reoccurring revenue stream, and that will still be the predominant driver of our profit and loss long term. So, yeah, single player is important, but hope you like live service games because that's that's going to be our bread and butter for years to come. We're ruining skate because of it. <laughs> um. And last but not least, uh, Marvel's Midnight Sun. Remember that game? Uh, delayed. Yeah. Marvel's weird XCOM uh, game based on a very obscure occult team in Marvel Comics has been delayed. Uh, it is coming out now sometime in March, uh, sometime before March of 2023. But that's all we know. Uh, also, I want to add, uh, Bubaloo the Destroyer in the chat reminded me, uh, Analog Pocket now has more cores. So uh, they they have added. Oh, actually, spiritualized 1997. Uh, the undercover analog guy uh, released uh, the um, Master System, uh, Game Gear, and SG One Thousand. What is SG One Thousand? Ooh, that was uh, the system before the Master oh, System. Right, right, right. Uh. And that's it. There's also Neo Geo Pocket, but uh, we knew about that already. Oh, no, yes. no. We knew about Neo Geo. Oh, wait. I thought Neo Geo and then Neo Geo Pocket was different. Well, technically, yeah. Neo Geo is the, the, the home console. Neo Geo Pocket is the, the, you know, the portable version. 
<laughs> Maybe I conflated the two. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, new thing is now some Sega cores. Uh, still not Genesis, but uh, we're we're getting there. All right. Uh, let's talk about the tweet of the week real quick. Tweet of the week. Let's, tweet of the let's week. talk tweet about of the week. it. Now, this one's a video. Uh, I laughed out loud when I saw it. Uh, it might not have the same effect now, but it's just a monkey, and the Twitter account is dumbass. Um, I'll turn my audio on. Uh, here it is. It's, oh, that's a good one. That's just good old-fashioned fun. That's a fun time. <laughs> it's just like a, it's like a gorilla who's on a branch... And he's psyching himself up. He's playing the drums on the branch. Yeah. He's psyching himself up to just fall off the branch face first. <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> stupid. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Starting with all of you who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, also, Ca- Carl Overdurm with seven months. Wolf Bros, I hope I made it for the podcast. You made it. You just made it. made it just in time. Last week, we have Isaac Ray who says, I need to know your thoughts on Xenoblade 3. No, you don't. Don't want to play it. Doesn't look fun to me. Uh, It just... that That's a yeah, that's a game that, like, will just be too much game for boys like us. I don't have time for a game that's over 100 hours. Uh, I don't have time for a game that's over 50 hours unless yeah. it's all multiplayer. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Gligar guy says it's always weird that Bob insists insists he loves Mario but hates every single Mario spinoff. <laughs> this is a good topic. Uh, cart party, the various sports games we've seen recently, etc. It makes me wonder how Will puts up with him. Drugs, really, I, it's just a lot of drugs. I don't know how Will puts up with me either. But uh, Mario is not his spinoff games. <laughs> You no, said it yourself. No, they are spin off yeah. games. They are the worst of the Mario games. I think the problem is like Mario, like the Mario spin offs, at least originally, had like set a high bar for what spin off games could be. Mm-hmm. Like the first few Mario Kart games, excellent. Uh, the first two Mario Striker games, fun as hell. Mario Golf, Mario Tennis on N64, classics. Uh, at some point, you know, they, they just don't have the same return on investment that the originals had. They just get, you know, and I don't want to say like they get lazy or complacent or whatever, but they just don't have the same spark that the originals did, you know. I'll say they're, they're, there's a lot of great Mario sports, ga- sports games and Mario spinoffs. They, they, yeah. Ma- Nintendo has very good polish they set the bar pretty high for themselves but they're uh yeah. they are gonna be worse than the mainline mario games yeah i will say like you know a mario spin-off like mario kart for as much as we rag on it i'd still rather play that than any other kart racing game especially a spin-off of a pre-existing series because mm-hmm. there's still a level of quality to mario kart over something like crash team racing or uh Nickelodeon All Stars Cart or whatever. Uh, Sh- Seamus Byrne in the uh, from last week says, "What Bob got wrong on N- Nintendo is the funniest segment so far." I didn't watch last week's, uh, so you get off the hook this time. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to do it every week because it has to catch you by surprise. <laughs> right. Well, last week we, I, I was at my desk, so I was able to mostly correct myself. Uh, I, I right. think I, I. I did say, uh, I, I, I said something, uh, I called myself out. I said uh, that um, I think uh, Pokemon Y, X and Y had a thing where uh, there was an area that was different in X or Y. And then I was like, I better look this up because Will's going to say I was wrong. And I think I was wrong about that. I think it's black well, and white that had the areas. Oh, I, d- I knew that actually. I knew that black and white had different areas, but I wouldn't have known if X and Y had different areas because I didn't play X and Y. So you right. might have gotten off the hook. But there's a reason why I got Y specifically. I don't remember what that reason was. I don't know. I, I do remember hearing that like black and white have like different areas depending 
the, the which game you play. Right. Uh, Mr. Fixit uh, says, hey, Bob, just so you know, I saw a Reddit post saying that you can copy the game files from Amazon Game Launcher to your Steam Deck. It's still oh. dumb to have to install another game launcher, a hacky pain way to do it. But if you're on a budget and need more games for your Steam Deck, all right, I'll look for that because I have I got yeah. that game. What was it, Onbringer or something? Yeah, Scourgebringer from 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 last week. Uh, and I would like that on my Steam Deck, so I'll try that. Although I do have the Ion Neo Air now, and I could just put it on that. Uh, yeah. Last up is a guy with a Chinese name. If it's not Chinese, it has the Japanese word for big. And that's the only thing I can see. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen anybody complaining about the female protagonist in GTA. Not even the usual suspects. I'd like to know who those usual suspects are. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to dislike the punching down part about that. And that's about it. You're basically yelling at straw men and straw women, of course. <laughs> yeah. What what does that mean? Um, they seem to dislike the punching down part. What was the punching? They, down they part? think that I think what he's what they're trying to say is that um, you know the people who are complaining about GTA Six are more so complaining that like they're afraid the the humor is like not going to be as edgy as the previous games. You know how like you know they're not going to be as like mean and pick on like uh, marginalized groups as much as they did in previous. games. They're afraid it's going woke, Bob. That's what they're afraid. Yeah, of. and, and, afraid and we, Grand Theft Auto is going to be woke. We mentioned that, uh, but yeah. Also, I talked about how I didn't see the outrage. I only saw the outrage about the outrage. <laughs> yeah. But Kotaku put up an article uh, that was the reaction to the Grand Theft Auto uh, uh, going woke or whatever. Yeah. So it's got to exist. <laughs> yeah. Unless Kotaku is making stuff up. I feel like, you know, because I've seen I've seen this a lot with uh, Prey, the new Predator movie that just came out. And people are like complaining about it, how it's not as good as the original, how like the original did all this stuff really cool and that the this movie doesn't. And and there was their arguments all boil down to the fact that it's a female protagonist. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Like that's the problem with it's terrifying. Prey, is that it's it's stars it stars a woman, and we all know that women can't fight the predator. It's ridiculous. What's next? A woman fights in the alien or a Terminator? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, the the Kotaku article I was mentioning. Uh, it looks like a video. It's a dramatic reading of comments about Grand Theft Auto 6. I'll watch that later. That's funny. Uh, now we're in the chat real quick, but first with Jin yes. Jukebox. Thank you for the 19 months. Uh... Oh, you also looked up something about Pikachu surfing as well. That's true. I thought that... So in Pokemon Yellow, the beginning opening cinematic, Pikachu can surf. He can fly. And I thought that was a reference to how he can be an HM slave in Pokemon Yellow, which is not true. I don't think he can uh, <laughs> learn those abilities. Uh, there are mini games Luke where An- he can fly and stuff. Luke Antone, uh, what's the big upgrade you want to see for the next Switch? And do you think it'll be out next year? I think it was planned for next year, but I don't know if it'll happen. Yeah, I'm a little worried. Uh, I think the big upgrade I think everybody wants is 4K support and better Joy Cons. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want more graphical fidelity. I don't want anything else really. I mean, yeah, better. Yeah. They got to fix the Joy Con issue, obviously. But uh, yeah, I just want more graphical fidelity, and that's it. I don't even necessarily I, I want 4K. Just you know, let me hit yeah. a steady 60 frames in most of the games that you're gonna pop out for it, and I'll be happy. I'm assuming that the next Switch is going to have, like, you know, a better processor in it, like the Tegra 2 or whatever. So it'll be able to play more games, more graphically intense games than the Switch 1. Um, So that's not really, like, at the top of my list because I just assume that's going to happen. But I think uh, 4K support, uh, you know, lock 60 uh, frames for all games and just better better Joy-Cons, honestly. Uh Mauv Scarb in the chat brings up a good point. I want the next Switch to be backwards compatible with the entire Switch library. 
Yeah, that's uh, important. Uh, that is necessary. But uh, a feature I want in the next Switch is I want a much better online account system. And yes. I think with that, we'll bring a better, more updated version of backwards compatibility that every other fucking game console is is on board. Every other game company is on board with except for Nintendo. Um, yeah. That's what I want. I don't want to have to buy Super Meat Boy for a fourth time, you know, on the Switch. Yeah. Where do you think Nintendo will go after the Switch? Um, they better stick to hybrid stuff or just portable yeah. in general. Uh, I, yeah. I I think that they're out of the uh, dedicated home console game, and I think they should stay out of it. Yeah, I think... I think that, you know, if they're smart, they'll realize that they're done with, you know, every console has to have a gimmick. They found the gimmick that works, so just right. make that again. Or like the next gen version of that. Yeah, the gimmick. Yeah, they found the gimmick that works. Um, yeah. But they're gonna put another fucking gimmick in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know what? If they do, that's fine. But you know, just make it make it like you know, analog triggers. Make that be the gimmick. Something simple. Mm-hmm. Oslaws says, uh, "Are you only doing a session on Sunday for Long Island Retro Game Expo?" Yes. Uh, we'll only be there on Sunday, yeah. and I think two thirty. Yeah, um, uh, I mean we'll be at the show floor on Saturday, so if you see us, just wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, you're, we're open to people just coming up to us and saying hi if you want, yeah. like to just say something or 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 whatever you want. Uh, yeah, uh, feel free. Uh, yeah. So we'll be there, li- and it's a small convention, so you'll see. If and we're tall men, so you'll probably see yeah, us. We are. I will uh, be wearing this hat. I s- will probably be there around three o'clock on s- on Saturday. Um, so yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mecha Dragon says, "Why do you call your podcast Nintendo Podcast when you still talk about Nintendo games?" Uh, because it's a copyright issue. <laughs> trying to skirt around some copyright here uh anyway hope you guys have a great time at your con this weekend i had a blast at game on expo in phoenix last weekend oh Ooh. very cool uh will did you play shredder's revenge and what are your thoughts i did uh i need to get back into it it was excellent i really liked it a lot i think if you if you played Ninja Turtles games in the past, you're gonna love this. And even if you haven't, it's just a fun side scrolling beat 'em up. It's you know, it's just a good pick up and play game. You can go through it at your own pace. Uh it's got a lot to unlock and a lot to explore. I hope they do more games like that. And I'm looking forward to the Cowabunga collection, even though those are all games I played already. <laughs> all right. Uh I'm done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As all the podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 and right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks for being here. Uh, I will not be streaming tomorrow. I will try my best to stream Thursday. And I, there might be a cheeky Friday stream here too over on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. This week on the YouTube channel, we have a review of the Aya Neo Air. It's a Steam Deck competitor. It looks kind of like a Switch Lite, but it runs on full-blown Windows, which Ooh. is cool sometimes and bad sometimes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for being here, and we'll see you all later. Why don't we raid somebody who's streaming right yeah. now? Uh, oh, it's Wood. Go say hi to him. He yeah. has a headache. Oh, oh poor baby. Poor baby. Uh, tell him we said, just go in there and say sup. All right? <laughs> and we'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.